Hey, how's it going everyone? We are back and we're going to do some more SDL2 work and just expand the sound class a little bit. So this is a continuation from the last video I did on my channel, which is part one of this uh, um, series on SDL. I don't know how far I'm going to go with it. depends on interest. So uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing more of this sort of thing. So what we did last is, let's see, we basically got some basic sound effects playing as many as we want the more you add the more choices you have and it just plays them until you enter negative one in the console uh, I did have one small error uh, which I need to show you guys so when you play a sound effect if it if the one you choose is larger than the bank size then we actually want to return right here Otherwise, it will attempt to play a sound that doesn't exist, and it will crash. Fixed return on fail. No crashy. Stage commit and push. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just tag tag this one like video one. There we go. We'll push that tag. And now let's just create a new branch here to do our new work. Now, basically, what I want to do next is add another thing but not just for sound effects let's go ahead and hit play on this real quick I want to add one for music so I have sound effects here it's like loaded all three one zero one and two are ready so let's try these out real quick I'm gonna start with two you are there. Now we're gonna one zero so those are my sounds that I loaded from my Dropbox and uh, if I do one out of range it'll just We'll just do nothing until we hit negative one, and then it'll uh, apparently say sound out of range, and then still leave. Oh, okay, I see why. It's because it does attempt to go through this just based on how we have our loop. Even if we put in, let's see, negative one here, it attempts to play the sound effect, clears, and then it. And this is where it exits. So if we want negative one. To immediately exit, we could just say like if uh, we could do this right here, choice uh, equals equals negative one. Uh, we will just well, we could either return or we could uh, break out of the while loop with a break. So that way it doesn't attempt to play a negative one sound. So I'll hit you are there. a few things here, and there we go. So now we want to add other sound, not just sound effects, but we want to add music. Say we want to add some background music or something to our, our level. And of course you want sound effects to be able to play and music to be able to play. So with, with playing uh, music you want to be able to pause it, resume it, and do fades. So I don't think we're going to get into fades, but I will cover some, some basic play and pause logic. Well, let's see here. Let me think about this. I think we're just going to add... Yeah, we'll just add a second class. SDL2, we'll just say music. So I'm just going to add in a music class, and I'm going to take this initialization and make it sort of uh, static. That way it doesn't happen over and over. And see, right off the bat here, put my class not within this folder. Come on, Visual Studio. Could someone fix that, please? If I right-click on a folder and then add within a folder, why doesn't it go into the folder? Uh, it's just such an obvious thing that was overlooked. All right. So we're going to have a very similar thing. I'm just going to go ahead and copy all this, and we're just going to get straight to business. This is uh, public. And, of course, these are SDL2, music and not sound effects. All right. So we'll just keep it going here, and we want add add music track, and we want to play music track, and we're also going to want some other ones like uh, a pause, because that's what you're used to seeing on controls function that plays or pauses the music, and this one will play a different music track, and instead of mixed chunks, we're going to have mix music. Because those are longer form 
Okay, very well. Now we're going to have to initialize all this stuff. And like I said, now this initialization that came from the first one is going to be a little bit awkward now. So we're just going to make a, a single initialization class. Or maybe we'll even just make it a... Yeah, I guess a class is good. Let's do another class here. And we'll call it, uh, I guess, SDL init. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think how to. Do I could just do. I'm probably overcomplicating this. Like we could just in, initialize it in our main before calling these classes. But I just kind of want it to be all encompassing, and you not have to do additional groundwork in the main. So your main, you can just like instantiate a class and then do stuff right away with it. That's my personal preference. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to call it SDL. Init. I guess we're going to do some logic like this in front of it. We got to have the class instantiated. Or the, uh, we have to have this variable available right away. I feel like this is going to just confuse people, but oh well. Maybe you'll get something out of it. All right, so the sound effects are fine. They now just init the sound. Uh, music is the thing we've got to work up here. Okay, fine. We'll add vector. We've got to add all that stuff. But we haven't even used it yet. Let's just make sure our new init class works by hitting play here. And since we got some build errors, what's the error here? Music mix is undefined. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're not even using that class, but... Okay, we got an exception thrown. Read access is null pointer. Uh, well, oh yeah. So well, we want to do it like that. We don't want to check it against anything. We just want to see if it's a null or not. Okay, so there we go. That's better. So it works. It's you are there. All right. So it works fine with that initialization class. Let's just run it again to be sure. All right. Uh, and now we want to get the music going. So the music's going to look very similar to the sound effects, whereas uh, when we start out, we're just going to initialize it with SDL init include. Yeah. So we need to include that so we can so we can do what we want. I don't think we're doing anything here. You know, we're just going to move that for now. You know, we're not going to use this one. It's all going to take care of itself when we exit the program for now. So we want an add music track. We want to play music track. And we want a play pause. If we instantiate this class, it will initialize SDL if it needs it. So we can, we can work that right in here. We got the sound effects already. And we can also do SDL to music. No, doesn't see it. Okay, I gotta include it. Right. And then we can do a very similar thing as these, except we gotta control a few different things as far as how we're loading it. And we should get we should grab longer waves of actual music. So let me just find something real quick here on my drive. So we'll have one music thing there. And of course, it's not add sound effect, it's add music track now. So that's why that's completing. And looks like we should use uh, these other slashes. What we can do right off the bat is we can just play the music, play music track, and then we can have a little checker in here. So if we want to add a music track, we've got to take that path and attempt to load it. So we'll do mix music, and it's mix load muse. And it'll be the path. If you're using a string, you'll need path.cstring. And before adding it to our list, we want to check that it is legal. So if it's not null pointer, basically. 
then it is good. If it is a null pointer, it's bad. So if it's null, we'll do this whole error. And we're going to need SDL to log that error. Do I, what is it? What's my uh, data called? M sound effect base, M musics. I'll just call it musics. Is musics a word? I don't think it is. So there we go. It's good. It'll add it. If we hit play in which, it'll just attempt to play the one we're at. Which is going to look good. Well, we want to check her once again to make sure we're not going off uh, or out of range. So first of all, we'll just check that it's greater than m music's dot size. We want to just return. I'm not going to worry about giving them a message. I'm just going to not do anything. And we'll just attempt to play that. Mix play music m music's dot at which and we will do a negative one which is the loop and there we go so that will play a music track and now we, if we want to pause it we're going to need a few more variables we're going to need a boolean for paused and boolean play and when we play a new track we'll set it right away to true. Alright, so in our play pause logic, basically we want to check if it is plain. Well, M plain. Okay, so if it's not plain and it's not paused, Then we basically would want to play our track, but it should already be playing because we you hit this play music track to play a certain one. So what we actually want to look at here is if music is playing and it's not paused, then we want to pause it. So, and we do that with mix pause music and it'll just pause the current one that's playing and we'll say m paused equals true at this point it's still considered playing it's just paused so that's the point of the pause just like on a cd player you hit pause it's still considered playing it's just like stuck at that location until you hit play again so it doesn't lose its track uh, i guess this should actually be an else if because we just want to make sure it's actually playing. So if it's playing and paused, then we just want to unpause it basically with mix resume music. And then we'll say m paused equals false. So it has to be playing. And the other else case is uh, music's not playing. So we just, I guess, return. And in plain, even though it's cannot be modified because it's being accessed through a const object. Oh, that's the problem. So I'm I marked this as const, so it's not allowed to change any member variables. So that's that's pretty typical about any complaint. And look, there we go. The music is playing. Sound effects play. And if we hit P, oh no, we've entered some kind of loop. P, like nobody, oh, it's because it's an int. So what I'm actually thinking is if it's a character, and that still shouldn't bug it out because when it sets back to zero, it shouldn't care anymore, but apparently it is, so I'm not, I'm not going to question any further here. No, we'll still call this an int. Fine. And, but instead of switching on P, we'll call the music something. We'll just stick with the integers. 
I don't know. How about 11? Enter 11. For now. 11 played and pause the music. So, there. Yeah, so. Oh. And if I hit a bunch of ones, it's confused because it's out of range. So, there we go. I know. I know. It works. It's amazing. It's great. If you want to see the code, check out GitHub. Thanks for watching this episode. Hope you're able to get music playing okay in your application uh, using some of the things that were shown here. As you can see, it's pretty efficient. You know, using the, just this basic logic I'm doing here, you could make your own little sound player, your own little sound playing program. So get you started. So I don't want to play that too long because I know it's just going to get flagged. But uh, looks to be working pretty good here. So yeah, if you want a better logic choice for do and play pause, feel free. I'm aware that this isn't the best way of doing it, but I'm pretty happy about getting the initialization set somewhere else. That way, it is auto handled no matter which class we instantiate. It will only initialize once with this uh, with this sort of method. All right. Well, see you guys in the next episode. Keep coding. Peace out.